Um, first, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of introduce yourself a little bit to everybody. I've got so much stuff I want to talk about. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, okay, be- great. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm Michael Glotz, and I'm a CEO of Strategic Risk Associates, and that's a firm that I started in 2008, so it's 15 years old. Uh, we're having a lot of fun here at SRA. We start, started out as a pure consulting uh, company, uh, veteran bankers and former regulators. In the last recession, doing bank turnaround works. We had dozens of banks that had consent orders or you know, the, the regulators wanted to close them down, and we were bank savers. We saved the bank. We came in and help the management team, you know, upgrade the management team, solve problem loans, put new credit standards in place. And out of the 25 banks that we work with, we only, only one of them was shut down. Yes. And so that was great. And uh, before you. that, I was with Capital One Financial, and built uh, their first enterprise risk management uh, system and uh, was chief strategy officer at SunTrust Bank for a number of years. So I've been having too much fun in the banking business for too long, guys. Too long, right? <laughs> I, I understand. I think sure well, not long enough right now. I, I I still have that energy to 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 go for more and uh, and do more. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I feel like I've kind of I'm I'm hadn't yet peaked out. I'm I'm getting mm-hmm. close, but you know, not quite there yet. <laughs> hey man, I got some great stuff I wanted to talk to you about. We had Joe Maxwell on the other day and he talked real highly about you guys. Well, Joe is my favorite chairman of the board at SRA. Uh <laughs> and and they have really uh we closed a series B round with Ben Top Capital and Joe and what a true business partner. He's been there, done that. You know, Joe has uh, grown a number of technology companies. He's streetwise. He's an operator. And SRA needed, you know, that network that he brought to us has been fantastic. Uh, some of the stuff that you guys are doing, which I find just crazy cool. Uh, I remember the first time I talked to him, I had some some problems that had come up with one of the participants and they were having some issues about, you know, just tracking IP address hops where people were. Right. So we have sanctions against another country and we've got people that are moving, you know, monies across different ways. And I was like, it was it's kind of a problem for base, you know, your basic traditional fraud capture mechanisms. Mm-hmm. And that was my first question. He's like, Oh, hell yeah. So, you know, Michael went and kind of walked me through all that, brought their whole team and explained the depth, uh, an incredible depth of what you guys do on not only just the the risk component side and the compliance risk piece of what you do, but also what you're building on the data side. Yeah, it, um, we, you know, I'm a real believer in, you know, aggregating data to measure risk. Mm-hmm. And and that, that really gets back to my Capital One days. We Capital One was an information-based security, information-based strategy company, and they, They originated loans with data. And, you know, my objective in helping to build a risk organization is using the data, that same data that that you're using to originate loans is data that you need to monitor for the risk. And, uh, you know, risk and strategy are two sides of the same coin. So aggregated monitoring of fintechs is one of the things that we've been working on. Currently, we're monitoring 68 fintechs by aggregating already existing industry data. And and that's data from uh, CB Insights, from Dun & Bradstreet, from Security Scorecard, and in other sources to create an alerting mechanism for, uh, you know, for the fintech so that that banks can, you know, just have another tool uh, to help monitoring. And then we work with fintechs to uh, kind of aggregate their data quarterly to create a risk profiles, not only help them understand their risk relative to bank regs and relative to bank needs, but also to give a a scorecard for the banks to meet their regulatory obligations. So, uh, So we're aggregating, you know, fintechs is one area, but we also aggregate for over a hundred banks in the U.S., data at the top of the house to create uh, risk scorecards, and that's 
for all risk, credit, interest rate risk, liquidity, operational risk, so that a board member or CEO uh, has a, a pan panoramic view of risk in the organization and they can drill down and look at it. And uh, it's been a pretty popular product. Google has taken it on to aggregate risk at the top of the house. So they were looking for a good risk system to aggregate normalized data. And we think continuous monitoring of risk data is where the banking industry needs to go and where some of the forward looking uh, bankers that we all know uh, are picking that up right away. Well, what, what I find so cool about all this is that you know, whether you're a traditional bank, you've taken things to replace what's there and move higher, right? So higher up in the food chain, much more com uh, uh, complete in the process. Yeah. And in that process, you've also kind of taken a tangent over here into the fintech land for Bass. Right. Bank. So the Bass banks now. Well, then you have can just call it commercial. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. That's, that's it. it. That's, yeah. <laughs> Ding. Yeah. But uh, you've got such a more complex world over there. If you can solve for that, you can damn sure solve for a regular community bank. Right. And so being able to work both sides of that equation is really cool. But on the, the bass side of those bankers and their fintechs, that's where a lot of the fraud happens because of the velocity right. and speed of where all these yes. things are, right? Yeah. How do you guys, what do you do? I mean, what's your secret sauce, man? Oh, you know, you have the secret sauce now, Yeah, right? You've got the KFC recipe, there man. There you go. There you go. Well, you know, uh, I think a lot of, you know, uh, you know, a lot of our, if you want to call it secret sauces, we have a lot of bankers that have no risk and we have really a good collection of veteran bankers and former regulators that know this pretty well. And, uh, you know, data is one element and our SaaS software is another element. But at the end of the day, the core of it is uh, what do you do with the data? And, you know, how do you interpret the, the data? And uh, so part, I think, I think one of our secret sauces is we're not afraid to bring the data together, let the data, you know, uh, describe what the story looks like. And then, you know, our goal is to help the fintechs become better risk managers by giving them the feedback. And at the end of the day, that helps the banks make sure that that process is in safe and sound. And if we do it right, uh, it's really a cool thing that uh, we make the whole industry more safe, more sound, and allows for growth, you know, growth for the fintechs, growth for the banks, growth for the U.S. economy, uh, and, you know, being able to offer consumers more credit to uh, to help meet their family's needs. That's kind of the way we see our business. I, I think he said something just really profound there, and it was basically the data is one thing, but knowing what to do with it's another. I mean, we sure see a lot of that in our customer yeah. banks and friends, right? And I think we've done so much with it for so long. I mean, the tragedy is probably that we're the experts on what to do with it, right? But we've <laughs> seen so many use cases, right. you know what I mean? And so we have a lot of people that reach out to us and look at us as a, a data source, and that's fine, right? But right. I, I think where where we see the, the most interesting things and frankly, the most successful customers, it's to your point when they reach out and look at the, the expertise of what to do with it. Because that's, yeah. it, you got to ask the data to tell you those stories. Well, that's it. And if you don't know the questions to ask, you never get there. And you always talk about, you know, the fact that don't believe yourself and try to validate it with data. Right. Actually believe the information, especially when it's hard facts. Well, my, and I, it'll change your mind. I get messed up daily, right? My own ego gets thrown out the window when I actually look at the information, right? Uh, it's one of those businesses, I think, and we all take it for granted, even though we're in it. It is a very complicated business. Yeah, it is. Oftentimes, our opinions get get trumped by the data. It's pretty cool. Yeah, there, there's such a neat angle here of what you said. You know, insights or however you guys want to look at it. And, and SRA is doing the same thing, where ask a question and then try to get the answer rather than try to build a case with your data. Right? Yeah, I wouldn't then, call Michael and tell him <laughs> yeah. what I needed. I would tell him what I was trying to solve. That's it. Right. That's right. It. 
yeah. right there. Yeah. And that's really exactly the angle I think they've taken with everything is that, okay, just describe the problem to me Perfect. and turn me loose and let me kind of do what I do to fix these things. And that's how they've been able to understand the depth. So their relationship with thread and, and with people like Joe and understanding the, the, the scope of that many fintechs yeah. as well as that many banks, just yeah. regular institutions, and being able to see the problem from a broader perspective the and then saying, okay, hey, and I'm going to take all of this problem and start trying to figure out how to solve this thing. And, and the evolution of that comes right back to what they're building with the, hey, let's get a fintech system where we can begin to say, this is a more risky way or this is a less risky way. That's pretty cool stuff right there. We and you know we uh, we always look for you know more ways to leverage that data. You know, data is not emotional. You know, right. it doesn't cry. Well, uh, data is objective. You know, uh, but you know, aggregating a lot of data also uh, doesn't give much. And so, what we decided since that we're you know we're veteran bankers and former regulators. We're going to create a risk expert in Watchtower that uses the data. So uh, we like to think we develop a risk expert that can help send alerts to to people to make their the, their mundane job of collecting a lot of data uh, more interesting. And in that uh, we let them know what actions they need to take given what the data says. So having that risk expert and then applying that. And not only, you know, aggregating the risk of the bank as a whole, uh, but, you know, we love fintechs because we're a fintech ourselves. We use the data on ourselves. We actually monitor uh, the data and we actually uh, use our Watchtower product to measure our risk uh, internally. And the first time I saw the ratings, I thought, man, we have some work to do here at SRA to, <laughs> uh, to, to get our risk in order. But it's... And, and then we're just uh, launching uh, a product called Capital Stress Testing so that banks can monitor, and this is kind of more forward-looking, taking historic data and then applying kind of foresight to say, if if there's a series of events, how much do we have enough capital to continue to operate? And right now what we're finding is that, hey, you know, with the deposit runoff in the banking business, uh, with the fact that capital is really expensive for banks to raise, uh, you know, they're they're going to need to start uh, maybe slowing the loan growth down in the short term until capital becomes available. Yep. Uh, and, you know, playing with some, you know, capital scenarios allows them to optimize that, you know, uh, scenario. And again, it's using data. And it's just so much fun because it's, you know, we're, we're risk nerds here at SRA, but we're a bunch of risk nerds and we like building building things that help the businesses, uh, the banks do better. I'll tell you what, I uh, I watched a, a whole thing just earlier about you know the, the tightening of credit and banking. And of course, we've been talking about yep. it here for a couple of months and uh, that this could be the next mm -hmm. thing that causes a little bit of a rift with everybody. And I, I yeah. think when call report data comes out, that'll you know everybody's gonna be looking at deposit runoff. This we're gonna know a lot more. Yeah. In 90 days from now, when we're looking at call report data again, I'll be looking at restriction of loan access, right? And so that that's a big deal right now. Man, you guys are just eight miles ahead of the curve on every damn thing you do, whether it be watchtower or whether it be the credit side or whether it be scoring fintechs, you know, this is all like revolutionary ideas. Mm -hmm. Great. I've met with his team a couple of times, by the way sharp people i so that was the feedback from our team that was on those calls right and i, I think that says a lot when <laughs> when our team gets engaged in a data discussion with another company and they're coming back saying how smart they were <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> yeah i've so, seen a few of those on the other side right well so, that's why we're working with you all because uh what you're doing uh with the with the bass association and that is is just exciting because you're you're very much aligned to you know veteran bankers building helping other bankers uh with your experience and knowledge and and your data you're a data aggregator uh that's an exciting thing to see but you're sharing uh best practices across the banking as a service uh and fintech and that's that's really needed kind of a source that 
wants the whole ecosystem to get better. Uh, that we just saw that in 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 both of you and your organizations and said we want to be part of it. We want to be partners and you know maybe one and one can equal three in that in that case. Hey, it, I'll tell you what, it, you know, anybody that you know, everybody's out to make a buck so fast that they're willing to to, you know, you just destroy the playing field. And it's like if we don't do something to make these institutions more profitable and safer for the consumer, and there's a way to do it. And this is what's frustrating <laughs> as hell for people like me, you know, us and Michael is that we see how to do it. We're going about it. And it's almost like engage with us faster. You know, uh, I mean, I get these calls all the time and where it's like, you know, what are you seeing now? What are you seeing now? And it's like, well, hell, every two weeks, it's a different story, right? It all evolves pretty quickly. And uh, I think, you know, the types of fintechs that everybody was looking at just six months ago. Even even the words. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the categories have changed. And then the new categories where they'll say they see the most opportunity zones have changed. And this information needs to be shared better back and forth amongst the Bass Banks. And of course, the fintechs, you know, they've gotten a little humbled here lately, you know, a little access to capital issue. Yeah, you're, you're right. You know, there's some smart ways that we can help people. And then there's just the basic, how the hell we got here is not how we're going to move in the, the future. You know, the yeah. future looks completely different because of the merchants and all that, whatever word you want to use, businesses, yeah, access to debit cards or whatever. It's going to change everything. And, I mean, in short, the delivery of financial services to an end user shifting more and more to be done through trusted business relationships than physical branches. Right. 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 So I think that looks like a shift in commercial banking. We can call it brands or fintechs or other words. Right. That's it. But we, everybody working together in that process is a good thing for all of us in banking. A couple, right? a couple of basic principles. Denial is not a strategy. You know, let's get that straight <laughs> right off. It's not. And there's a hell of a lot of bankers that are just in total denial. Or, well, yeah. we've done this for 100 years. And it's like, that's not going to get you to the future. And I'm not going to tell you what the future is. Hell if I know. <laughs> but I can tell you it's going to be a lot different than today. It's not going to look like it did. And everybody that's on the technology side of banking is screaming at you that it's going this way. Get on board with that. And here's the best part. The faster your ass gets involved with it, the more money you make. Well, that's what the numbers say, right? I mean, look, this would be the first time. And I mean, I was there in the early days of mobile banking, right? And the the ROI in mobile was really mobile deposit. And think about the right. cost yeah. of working in a branch. And so what? through this most recent, you know, granted that was 10 or 15 years ago, right? Uh, through people. this, right, yeah. Through this most recent shift, it's you got to look for the ROI and the numbers, and we're seeing that. Yeah, even in the earlier days of a real systemic transition, which says a lot. Yeah, right. That's an accelerant, I think. Well, and, and imagine small banks with the ability to compete with larger banks by by leveraging, you know, some pre-developed technology in. You know, a lot of the smaller banks can't afford to develop their own new products and services like Citigroup or J.P. Morgan Chase. But imagining partner partnering with the innovative fintechs in your 250 million in assets in you know Abilene, Texas, and you can uh, have a national access to a national platform, national deposits, uh, do national lending. It really uh, starts to even the playing field and. Uh, it's really an exciting time, you know, in the banking business to be able to leverage that technology. And, and part of what we do is make sure that banks are doing it in a safe way and uh, leveraging it in the right way. Right. Man, amen, amen, amen. I agree completely. I, we must protect the consumer. I think we get that right. And yep. the other thing to this is there, there's no rules in love and warfare, I think, right? And so if you figure out something before you tell me, yeah, I think the fintechs are going to go out a bit or they're not going to make it or what. Well, they got some damn good ideas because they're taking money out of big banks and none of you have figured out how to do that yet, <laughs> except for them. Well, they can't do it profitably, but you might be able to do it profitably. And so right. if you see something that's a really good national brand in one of the fintechs, turn it into a direct bank. And so now you yep. have the option, you can have a hundred of these set up under yourself. I think there's another point to be made from the data side. 
the amount of profitability I've seen in the last three years in the direct bank space is like polarizing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I think about people like Mike Fernandez with Bankers Lender. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, uh, <laughs> you yeah. know, just crushed it. So and there's a fair. lot of those. Wow. And so I have the feeling right now that anybody who tries succeeds. I know that that's overstated, but just as a general ethos, it feels pretty true of the moment. And I think that shows that for me anyway, if you contrasted my statement the other way, it shows you the power of having a charter. Uh, right. I mean, yes. it, it is unbelievable how cool it is. And so yep. to kind of take it back, Michael, I like the, you know, the sort of fintech rating system, if that's the right wording that you guys are working on. And I think that that effort for you guys is similar because I think you learn a lot of things that you can apply to your regular community bank base and probably yes. help pull them forward. Yep. Is that a fair statement? It, it is a fair statement. And, you know, and really risk is risk. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of the fintechs are on the leading edge of risk and leading edge of reward, you know, uh, which is great. But there's a lot of lessons learned. Uh you know, from those uh, innovative companies and just love those companies and the entrepreneurs, but how can the banks uh, learn from that? And, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I did a little bit of work uh, the other week. Uh, one of our customers asked us how many of the key indicators that you have for the fintechs are key risk indicators for the bank? Well, about 50% of them, you know, it's the same you know, it's you know, it's the same risk in a lot of cases. Now, there's always unique fintech risk around capital, and uh, you know, raising capital is a unique one. Uh, and on the bank side, you know, there's there's uh, you know a lot of unique you know liquidity and strategic indicators. But uh, we learn from that. You know, that those indicators. You know, fintechs are a mini bank in many respects, and you know, the same risks that they. Uh, they have to manage, you know, a lot of banks have to manage as well. That's well, you pull the charter out of them and they fold. That's it. That's, That's it. Simple as that, guys. Yeah. And they can both pull these, you know, we, we've we seen it recently. It's like, wow, you know, uh, it, sometimes it's, uh, it can happen fast when you least expect it. Yeah, right. It was great. Well, we've been over here screaming about a, a digital bank run is coming for five years yes. and nobody heard us until it did. And, we felt and then the, the damn phone rings off the wall with all the regulators calling us saying, well, how do you stop it? And I'm like, you're not going to like the answer. Right. Uh, it's right. not a pretty one without just scaring the hell out of people worse. And so there's got to oh, yeah. be you know, where you can slow down that process. Well, you still allow people to do bill pay and accept their direct deposit and do the regular banking functions that they would do where it doesn't affect the normal guy. I mean, we've been moving towards real time for a long time, right? And I kind of <laughs> joke and call it real time fraud. <laughs> Sorry, it's not, it, that was a really funny joke for me six months ago and it's not it's as not funny, funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's an odd time, right? There's yeah. a, I think there's a large group of people that is beginning to really understand the fundamentals of banking that they thought all, they knew. All over again. All over again. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I'm one of them, right? I've had a number of times where it was, ooh, I hadn't thought about that one in a long time. Right. And so yeah. that, that's a good thing, I think, I think for all God of us. We've got people like Michael here thinking ahead. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, hell, he's a year and a half ahead of this problem before anybody even thought about it right. uh, or two years ahead of it. So, hey, man, any final, you do the final thought. That's part. my There's job. Part. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. There you go. Hey, I love hey. it, guys. Any <laughs> any final thoughts, anything you want to hit, man? I, we just want to know what's on your brain and what you're thinking about. You know, one of my final thoughts is, you know, with with an economy that might be getting a little, you know, a little more tough to operate in, uh, I think you guys talked about it earlier, sometimes getting back to the basic fundamentals of making sure you know, uh, you're you're looking at risk in the right way, and you know, take it taking a taking a look a fresh look, especially with Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Uh, they they made their own mistakes, but you know how can you, t- as a CEO or as a leadership team, take a fresh look at things? Uh, you know, anticipate that there might be some tightening in the economy, and uh, maybe some strategies that you want to do to conquer down a little bit in 2023, but get ready for fantastic growth, you know, 
in the coming quarters. You know, if you uh, you know plan for the worst but hope for the best, I think uh, banking is going to be fine from now to the end of the time. I love That's that. great, optimistic words. Appreciate everything you're doing with the Bass Association and, and helping everybody else along the way. And there's going to be bigger roles for everybody and all that going forward. So, yeah, uh, it's guys like you that that make, I mean, it's what bankers helping bankers is all about, you know, <laughs> is everybody getting together, sharing and it. lay their sword down and start helping each other. And we'll get through everything together. And like you said, there's going to be some lowering interest rates to come. There's going to be right credit. All those things are part of a cycle. We've seen it before. How to weather the storm through strength and management and better applications of technology. Well, we like your energy and, you know, making this business a little more fun yes. is, is a good thing. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to a uh, partner uh, for, for years to come guys. You bet. Thank hey, you. Thanks Appreciate so much it, for hanging out with us, man. We'll catch you next time.